Today, I wanna to talk about if you want to build muscle, do you need to lift heavy? What does heavy even mean? what rep ranges you should use based on science, and some of the common mistakes I see lifters make that keeps them from progressing. Okay, when it comes to rep ranges, what you may have heard and is commonly agreed upon by most people is that in order to build strength, you wanna lift in the lower rep range, maybe around one to five. For building muscle, you stay in the more moderate rep range, usually around eight to 12. And then for muscle endurance, you're gonna go in the higher rep range, a lot of times 15 and above. But the real question is, does science agree with that? And even if it does, should you only stick to one rep range if you're looking to build muscle? Now, the whole reason I'm even shooting this video is because I've been getting asked a lot lately about if you need to lift heavy. People are wondering maybe they're not lifting heavy enough and that's why they can't see results. But I think oftentimes people don't even understand what heavy even means and it can actually mean a couple different things. On one hand, you have to understand that heavy is relative. Heavy doesn't mean a certain weight. It means what's heavy to you. Whether you can only squat 40 pounds, 100 pounds, or 500 pounds, heavy is relative to the individual. Now, most of the time when we're speaking of heavy, it means you're doing lower reps for higher weights. So if you're only doing two or three reps on a set, that would be considered heavy. But at the same time, I think the argument could be made that heavy also means using enough weight that's gonna be enough to get you close to failure within a given set. And I think this is a common mistake a lot of people make is not working hard enough versus just getting wrapped up in how many reps should I do? What I mean by this is they're getting nowhere near close to failure. So I'm not saying that you have to get to failure or that you should be crushing yourself all the time to build, but you do need to be challenging your muscles you do want to be getting closer to failure and the weight should be slowing down considerably by the time you get to an end of a set and a lot of times you see people lift and they're just in there just lifting away and the weight never even slows down at all and then they stop and it's like man you didn't get anywhere near failure and you weren't using enough weight for how many reps you were doing so while I'm gonna cover in a little bit in this video rep ranges you should be considering what you need to consider first is, are you working hard enough in the gym? For a lot of people, just simply dialing up the intensity in the gym, and I don't mean intensity in terms of like percentage of your one rep max, I mean intensity in the gym, pushing hard, pushing heavy, pushing closer to failure, those last few reps should be very challenging. Just doing that alone and really challenging yourself is gonna be enough to grow some good muscle, especially if you're newer to training or have been training suboptimally for a long time. And speaking of people who are new to training, this is where rep ranges mean even less. When you're new to training, a lot of people get this paralysis by analysis and they have a hard time even starting because they're so worried about what should I do and they just never even really get started. Whereas it's like, when you're new, you can just show up, do almost anything, challenge yourself and your body's gonna respond really well. You don't have to worry about these different complex training programs and periodization and all this type of stuff because your body's gonna adapt quickly. And understand too, you're gonna learn more as you go. So just get in there and get started, challenge yourself and good things will happen. If anything, when it comes to lifting heavy, I would make the argument for people who are new to training that lifting heavy might not be a great idea just because you haven't built the motor patterns yet. You haven't built the skill. Lifting is a skill. Going through the movements is a skill. And the more you do it, the better you get it, the smoother it becomes. And if you're not doing a movement safely, especially more complex movements like squats and deadlifts, you're jeopardizing setting yourself up for injury. So in that case, it might make sense to go a little bit higher rep and lower weight. But you should understand the less reps you do, the more weight you can do and vice versa. This is something I see in people's training quite frequently is they'll do say leg press for eight reps and then later in the week they'll do leg press for 15 reps but they'll do the exact same weight for both eight reps and 15 reps so if you can do 200 pounds for 15 you can definitely do more than 200 pounds for eight the same thing goes for doing the same amount of reps for the same amount of weight week after week after week after week. Now don't get me wrong, you're not gonna be able to go up and wait every single week. If you could, if we went up five pounds every week for the rest of our lives, we'd all be squatting well over a thousand pounds. It's not gonna work that way. But if you just do the exact same thing every single week, your body's gonna adapt to that eventually and then you're no longer gonna see progress because you're not challenging it and giving it the progressive overload it needs to grow. Anyway, with those mistakes out of the way, let's look at some research to determine what might be best for both muscle size and strength while equating volume, which if you don't know what volume is in the research, it's considered sets times reps times weight. That total is your total training volume. 
So the first study I want to look at was done by Brad Schoenfeld. And what they did was designed a training program more towards powerlifting style of training, where they did seven sets of three using three minutes break between sets. And the other group did more of a bodybuilding style of training, doing three sets of 10 with 90 seconds between sets while equating total training volume between the two groups. And what they found was there was no significant difference in hypertrophy, which is basically muscle growth between the two groups, but there was a better increase in strength in the group that did sets of three. So what this could possibly tell us is it's really your training volume that determines if you're gonna grow muscle or not, not necessarily is it higher rep or lower rep, However, just because it doesn't seem to matter if volume's equated, that doesn't mean that there aren't advantages and disadvantages to the two types of training. For instance, in these seven sets of three, not only were there three minutes of rest between sets because it takes more rest to be able to optimally train again going that heavy, so you have to consider it was over double the sets with double the rest time, so you're spending a lot more time doing seven sets of three than you are three sets of 10. And on top of that, there was a higher dropout rate in the seven sets of three group, which just makes sense. There's more risk for injury going super heavy all the time. So while if you do enjoy lifting heavier, you can make the argument, hey, I can just lift heavy and see the same kind of results, possibly, but it might not be a great long-term outlook. But I'll go more into this in a bit because I do wanna look at another study that actually was just published this year. Now in this study, they had three different groups, one that did seven sets of four at 90% of their one rep max, one that did four sets of eight at 80% of their one rep max, and a group that did three sets of 12 at 70% of their one rep max, again, equating volume between all groups. Which for the record, this kind of goes back to what I was explaining before about how you can do more weight with less reps, and that's why the different percentages. So 90% of your one rep max, you can do for more weight, 80% you won't be able to do as much, and so on. So I just thought that might make things a little bit clearer if you weren't sure what I was talking about before. Now this group was for 10 weeks, which by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, the last one was for eight weeks, and this was for bench press only. And what they found at the end of the study was all three groups saw about the same amount of muscle growth, but the groups that did four and eight saw better strength gains than the group that did 12. So once again, it doesn't really seem to matter what rep range you're working in when it comes to muscle growth, as long as training volume is equated. However, there could be an added benefit to heavier work to increase strength. What we can reasonably conclude from this is volume is king. When it comes to building muscle, that's the most important thing. But if you get stronger through heavier work and you can use more weight in your more moderate rep range work, then you can pretty safely conclude that you'll be able to do more volume doing the higher rep work because of the added strength and therefore potentially see better results down the road. In fact, you could almost make the argument that heavier lower rep work was actually better because you're gonna get the combination of strength and hypertrophy that you don't really get with the higher rep work. But again, we need to factor in everything, including injury potential. We have to factor in what type of training do you like? Like if you hate heavy, heavy work, I wouldn't recommend going out and do a bunch of heavy training all the time because you want to enjoy what you're gonna do to make it sustainable. So you always have to factor in enjoyment and that's usually number one one for me is, do you enjoy what you're doing? And then you can start going down and seeing, okay, what's maybe a little bit more optimal. So really what it comes down to is whatever your goals are, you're gonna to wanna to use a little bit more of a certain rep range that's a bit better for that goal. So what I mean by that is, say you're more interested in strength. If you're a power lifter, you're gonna do more lower rep, higher weight work, cause that's specific to your goal. If you're a bodybuilder or someone who just wants to build muscle, you're gonna spend more of the time in the more moderate rep range work because that's your goal. Plus you're gonna be able to get a lot more volume in a lot less time with a lot less chance for injury by doing so. So that makes more sense for you. But no matter what, I typically recommend a mixture of all rep ranges for everybody because they all work together and they all have unique benefits that do work in tandem together. So like I said, if you get stronger, you're gonna be able to do more volume. If you do high rep work and you improve your muscle endurance and your work capacity in the gym, you're gonna be able to perform better throughout your moderate rep work and that's gonna increase volume and you're gonna see better results. So using them all is a strategy that I implement most of the time for just about everybody, myself included. And as you do get more experience, then it is a good idea to do more periodization where you take more specific focus focus with higher rep, more moderate and then lower rep and kind of work through that block by block by block. But there's really no right or wrong answer and it really depends a lot on experience, what you enjoy. The most important thing, no matter what, 
is that you're in the gym working hard. If you're doing that, you're gonna see results and you're almost naturally gonna progressively overload anyway. So progressive overload is basically that you are increasing your training volume over time and doing more because that's what's necessary to continue to see results. But this almost kind of happens naturally, even if you're not tracking training volume, just by improving strength and size, work capacity, everything else, it kind of happens naturally over time. But again, the more experience you get, the more muscle you build, the slower results are gonna become. And this is where more complex methods can make more sense. So that's how you build muscle through strength training, but nutrition is a big part of making sure you see the gains you're after. So to make sure you're optimizing your nutrition, especially through protein to build the muscle you're after, make sure you check out this top video next and I'll walk you through everything you need to know there. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in that other video.